Lisa, it's very nice to meet you. Nice I don't to meet you. I think we've ever crossed paths no, in our we careers, haven't. which is wild. Now, you have a, a very long, interesting title. <laughs> I'm a department head okay. um, at Virginia Tech, and I was the program chair for the interior design program at Virginia Tech, and I switched colleges over to a College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences, and I'm now overseeing four programs, one of which is their residential design program. Okay. So you're still overseeing interior design, but it's just in a it's, different college. It's gone from the interior design program is primarily commercial, and my own practice background was residential oh. and historic preservation. And so now I, I think that I can make more um, impact there because the commercial interior design program is in really great shape. I They're see. teaching sustainability. It's embedded in the program. I they see. are getting out extraordinary students, you know, they're doing really well. Mm -hmm. I see where me as an individual, where I think I can make the most impact now is with bringing that whole mindset to residential design. And so you started out doing historical preservation. Yeah, I started out in practice. I'm uh, educated and licensed as an architect, as well as a certified interior designer. I have my own business. And I started teaching as an adjunct. My business was primarily historic preservation, adaptive reuse. And I started teaching in an interior design program. And I realized I was spending more time doing that than running my business because it really was exciting to instill things in the students. Awesome. And, you know, they're so excited about what they're doing and what they're studying, that mm. the just the level of energy. And I realized, you know, I did a, I did, you know, I did fine in, as a designer in my own right, but I felt like I could have a bigger impact through mm. teaching and through really working with students and bringing out what they are best able to yeah. do. Yeah. So. Oh, that's great. You must, I mean, you must have obviously realized that you're like, I must love this because right, I'm exactly. more I'm of spending this all my that. time there. <laughs> I know. Well, I, yeah. I actually have the little bit of an opposite experience. I, for the first time, am teaching a full semester long course uh -huh. at CCA in San uh -huh. Francisco. And before I've I'm taught, I've taught a few workshops yeah. here and there or uh -huh. mini courses, or I've, I've, I've plugged into a project in a longer course, but I never taught my own. I have six students right. and they're, they're amazing. Like you yeah. just said, they're like sponges. I didn't yeah. expect them to be so devoted and, yes. and like there and yeah. listening and like they really want to learn and know. But what's crazy and one of the reasons I was asked to do this, I think A, they had a, they had a emergency vacancy and needed somebody right. to fill in. But B, they wanted me to bring the sustainability right. angle into this. Sure. And I was shocked at the, the, textbook that we have not a mention of sustainability right. there are a lot all. of bad books out and there. these are this yep. is the textbook that they're using yes. so I feel like I think it's great to hear that you that it's infused into the commercial design education over there and that you're right. getting that I'm sure you've got it pretty far along in in your department as well but it's kind of shocking how long it's taking mm -hmm. educational institutions to transition. Well, you know, like it's part of the accreditation, but I think there's always going to be a lag. Um, you know, it became integral to interior design accreditation within the last decade, mm -hmm. really. And it takes a while for the faculty to know what they need to teach. You know, I've, I've actually, in my time since I started teaching, I've written seven books because one of the things I realized in teaching interior design is, and this is going to sound horrible, but I didn't like any of the books. And so every time I would teach a class, like I taught the building systems class, so I wrote a book on sustainable building <laughs> systems and interior design, you know, and that kept happening. Yeah. Because the course materials to teach it adequately in a holistic way did not exist. Yeah. And so I'm not at all surprised to hear. Yeah, I mean, this book response. is for architects. It's yeah. an architectural material book. Right. I mean, there's not a good, it's hard to believe. For me to well, there are materials books, but I think, you know, it's it's it definitely is a place where we need to keep pushing it. 
So you've written seven textbooks. <laughs> wow. Not all of them are textbooks, but four of them are. Yeah. yeah. And and I I know you mentioned earlier that you're you're you University of Virginia? I went to the University so, of Virginia. So wait, so and you're teaching yes. at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech. That they Yes, they are not they're they're like um what do you call it? Rivals, rivals. Oh, <laughs> but, but you were saying that they that they rely heavily on you all to to do a lot of research and publish yes. quite a bit, and that yeah. that's that that um, you know it's you, it's a balancing act for you. And it and is. It's you know a lot of I'm at a research one institution, and they in order to get promoted and tenured, you have to publish, and it's really interesting when you're in a design field. Um, You can do creative scholarship, you know, like projects and that sort of thing, which is what I did at the beginning. But they have to win awards and be externally validated or Mm. it doesn't count. Mm. So just having a practice isn't enough. It needs to be an award-winning practice, for example. Or you have to go the route of publishing, like have a PhD and publish in journals and so on. Mm. And um, what ends up happening, it's very hard to do both. I mean, you can imagine it's very hard to have a PhD in some sort of research around design and have practiced. Yeah. And right now, I would say most educators are one or the other, not both. Yeah. Do you think that's a problem? Well, I think it. Um, it's not necessarily a problem, but I think it's hard to teach design without having designed. Uh, that's kind of where I was going, right? Yeah, yeah it's hard to be yeah. just a just a intellectual yeah, right. and not not understand the nuts right. and bolts. And of yeah. course that varies across institutions and programs, but right. yeah, I right. think that is a challenge. Yeah. But the benefit is that, you know, when you have people who are doing research, they understand the difference between a claim made that is based on evidence and those Data. that are based yeah. on maybe not so reliable information yeah Yeah, observation yeah whatever yeah and so we try to get that across to the students that you know you can't believe everything you read (laughs) like research is not googling something (laughs) it's not the same thing right right Right. totally well what are you researching right now or what's your next research Um, project I have a couple going on right now one is uh, like I'm looking at the impacts of biophilic design on uh our classroom spaces Mm. So really looking like what kind of spaces do you need to teach residential design because, you know, typical classrooms are pretty institutional. And I was so, going to say, have you run across very many classroom spaces that utilize biophilic no. design? No. <laughs> um, and in fact, I mean, there are a couple of things that have been done looking at it in K through 12 education, for example, and they've shown all the benefits So, uh, you know, it's an ongoing project. I have a student research team. You know, we did kind of this before survey, and now I'm working on making the actual changes to the environment Mm -hmm. so we can see what the impact is. But I think it's it's critical, like, if you're trying to teach students about design, the spaces they're learning in need to be well designed. That's really important. Oh, and they're, I mean, they're so not even. A lot of them aren't. Yeah, even at CCA, I mean, it's kind of architectural, but it's, right. it gets too bad hot. Bad acoustics, yeah, bad and it's just, and it's just concrete and white right. walls and very, right. very uh, sterile. Right. And that's standard. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a shame. That's, yeah, yeah, it's a great uh, point. And 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 then you could even go as far as like if you did create these fab- fa- fabulous spaces to work in that were inspiring, they could also convey all of the sustainability messages that need to be. Exactly. Conveyed, right. Exactly. Like you know, what is what goes into the actual furniture that we're going to put in these places? The finishes that are going to be used, the types of lighting, you know, monitoring, uh, you know, getting them very involved, and they want to be involved. That's that is what I have um, really found out. That you know, if you start bringing this up with students, they want to help. They want to be engaged. They want to participate. They want to know more. You know, they right. uh, they really are, they're thirsty for it. Wow. Well, we need a grant or some kind of fund to create this ideal classroom. Yeah. That would be Absolutely. amazing. Ideal classroom to teach interior design. Right. 
<laughs> right. And it is. I mean, what what a lot of us have done is we've recreated the environments we learned in, and there is this kind of aspiration for the open architecture studio sort of idea. Which is, yeah, which is almost like counter, right? Right. I feel like we're teaching a lot of things that we shouldn't be teaching in school. Like I could go down a whole rabbit hole around the charrette, the all-nighter. Right, competition, stay up too late, like, you know, damage like, your health. <laughs> yeah, all these values yeah. that, I don't know, we kind of push push into yeah. career. And, right. you know, we're, we're starting to question career right. in a big way, right? right? Sure, yeah. Right? No, and, and I have found over my the course of teaching that the students are less willing to do that. You know, yeah. they actually want to have some life balance, work-life balance. As they should. Balance. I mean, and, your early 20s are your mm-hmm. best years of right. your life. Yeah. Right. And it doesn't mean that you the quality of your work is worse. You actually do better work if you are rested and taking care of yourself. Take time to play. Take yep. time to recharge. Right. Go do something sleep. creative and fun. Right. Yep. Yeah, sleep. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Absolutely sleep. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah, it's yep. so true. So I think we need to, yeah, reimagine our schools in so many different ways. Yep. Yeah. So. I agree. Yeah. What's one of your favorite classes that you te- either teach now or have taught in the past? Um, for many years, I taught the senior level studio and the design research class that went with that. And I really liked that because it was... Um, discussing, you know, how to make evidence-based decisions, but it was for a design class. So instead of having things separated, having it as a, so they can understand and apply the whole process, you know, Mm -hmm. find good case studies, do, you know, code research, all that kind of stuff. But then also, like, what are they personally passionate about? You know, what is kind of the the focus or the thesis of the project going to be and what do you need to know to do that well and um, one of the things that I thought was really important is to bring in experts you know from around our our campus we have experts on everything Mm -hmm. so um, an example like one of the group of students was working on doing space habitats for NASA so Mm -hmm. we brought in the um aeronautical engineering people and the material scientists people and how do you make a sustainable biophilic design space capsule since people are aren't even going to be able to see the mm-hmm. earth you know if they're traveling to mars or something so you know i found that to be a really fascinating way to use all the resources at our disposal and teach the students they don't need to know everything yeah they need to know how to find the people who do know what they need to know so that is amazing because I, yeah, I've done, I, I do a lot that. of crits I'll go to school yeah, and do a lot. Yeah. I've done that for years and right. I do find or have noticed that I feel like sometimes the design rigor is not there like it it's about the warm and fuzzy or the Instagrammable right. moment or the trendy right. thing and it's almost like these students don't know how to incorporate research or Right. You know, build depth into these projects. So right. that is an amazing combination studio. Yeah, I really like that. Um, and so I'm trying to develop something similar, you know, in in this new department I'm in. Um, and also looking at just how, how we can make, you know, one of the things that I have noticed is that it's a, a lot harder for residential designers to wrap their head around or wrap their client's head around sustainable environments for interiors. You know, we have this thing like, oh, yeah, you need to replace your kitchen every 10 years. You should update, you know. And I think just it's inherently, it's media-driven, it's, um, you know, (laughs) neighborhood-driven, however you want to look at it. And I I think there's a lot of area for impact that could be had there. Yeah, a lot of ways to look at things. Okay, I have a personal question. Sure. <laughs> Just about my class and my students. And I think part of my issue is I'm not I'm not an academic. I'm a practicing yes. pro- pro- and professional. And so I'm always looking at these students like, what if they worked for me? Right. right. Sure. And so my big pet peeve is like they'll iterate and iterate and iterate and like mm-hmm. keep trying something. Or they will take they won't take shortcuts. Like they'll they'll 
they'll go the longest route possible. And maybe that's okay when as their students, mm-hmm. but I'm like, come on, you know, if, if, right. if you were being paid by the hour, I, I need you to like get well, to point A. Well, you have the exact opposite problem <laughs> that most educators have because a lot of times students want to jump to the first answer. Oh, okay. So, I mean, encouraging iteration as a student is actually pretty good okay. because if, if you don't, they will go with their first idea, which isn't necessarily the best idea. Well, and, yeah. and I, I guess maybe it's productive iteration, right? Because I that, do, and there I, is something you're right. to be said. For they'll that. they'll go yeah. to the first answer, but then they'll take forever yes. building the model or right. creating the sketch right. or whatever. Getting but caught in some but, rabbit hole. But productive yeah. iteration, productive I think, iteration is, is that's a the thing. Key. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is a thing for sure. For yeah. sure. I'd love to know. I mean, you talked about that you were in historical historical preservation yes. initially. Like what? got you and you could go way back if you want to your childhood even like where was that spark around thinking the, about the bigger picture and the planet and the ecosystem well i made the mistake when i first the like the very first class i taught um reading the climate um the scientists warm, warning to humanity that you came assigned out of that the, i didn't sign it i read it uh. reading the scientist I'm not signing it and um I had no idea. I had owned my own business. I was doing a lot of design work, which was historic preservation, but I didn't know that all of that had been happening, like the the Rio Summit, you know, on sustainable development and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, I have to teach this. And so I just started bringing it into my teaching. And then I realized, like, through AIA had a committee on looking at the synergies between historic preservation and sustainability, Mm -hmm. which is exactly what I was kind of coming to, like the most sustainable thing you could do is not tear it down, right? Reuse it, adapt it if you can. Yeah. And so it was kind of a natural synergy to really look at that um, and to, it it was just seems so important. And, you know, that was like in 1998 or something and I think about it and I thought it was so urgent everybody needed to know it now and do it now oh. right and boy you were and, way ahead of well and it wasn't in the education curve. then not I mean, at it really all wasn't not on anybody's all. not on people's radars yeah. even so that's amazing yeah. that you so kind I've of discovered that it. a lot in interior design education and yeah you know led one of the first how do you teach sustainability for interior design and all that kind of stuff through our professional organization that we have. Wow. So, um, you know, I feel like it's now everybody realizes they need to do it, which is a pretty, and not just because of me, but I had a a role to play in that. And I think it's a, Uh you know, a significant accomplishment and I'm really glad that happened. You were really trailblazing. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> wow. you know, yeah. it's more like from a panic point of view <laughs> in a certain way, but Oh gosh. Yeah. Now we're yeah. we're really needing Now to panic. we really need it. Yeah. <laughs> we need to panic now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, and then even historical preservation, I feel like that's come full circle. That wasn't maybe yeah. not the most exciting or sexy career choice. Right. Or or um, you know, specific practice. I always pick the wrong but, ones. I but picked it, that. I well, picked no. residential just, design, you know, the things, because it being an architect, those are not the choices you make. You you're just wanna. ahead of your time. <laughs> because to me now, historical preservation is, yeah. is back in the limelight. It's yeah. it's what you want to yeah. focus no, on. It, because and it's important for yeah. a variety of reasons, yeah, cultural of, as well as resource yeah. reasons. Yeah. 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 And sustainability, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I have to thank you for all that you've done for academia <laughs> oh, and for well, edu- you. educating these young people that really, yeah. you know, we've been talking a lot about how, how far we can actually go in our own practices, especially this, these smaller practices. And we really mm-hmm. need young people to, to really prod us and get us. Right. And I just would hope that they would have the confidence to do it. You know, I I heard the question earlier, like, what would you tell students? Being curious is really important, and I think they are. But being confident enough to raise the issues or to ask the questions and to engage the people that they think know everything. Um, You know, I try to, I have always tried to explain that you're going to go into offices where you're learning things they didn't learn. 
Right. And that doesn't mean that you know more than they do. Right. You know something different yeah. than, than what they might know. I would totally agree with that. I've had so many interns, and I feel like the ones, the most memorable ones are the ones that, that are confident and, ha- right. and have a voice, and but right. do it in a in a respectful manner. Right, right? exactly, Which, yeah. exactly. Yeah. There's a lot you don't know. Right, <laughs> exactly. But a lot that you do, right. and a lot, that you, a lot can, that, and you a lot that you can bring to yes. the table. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you.